So you start recording, yeah? Yes. Yes, uh, I think we, we can start. And I'd like to present the talk, Boris Bushkov, about uh, TAT polynomials, some functional relations on uh, TAT polynomial, the closer relation of the subject with the statistical mechanics and many other interesting topics. So, Boris. Yeah, so thanks for the for, for opportunity to give a talk in Yaroslavl. So <laughs> I've been in Yaroslavl several times last year, but nevertheless, it's my pleasure to, to be again uh, in Yaroslavl. Yeah, so uh, the title of my talk is, so I hope you see the presentation, yeah? Okay. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, so it's, um, the talk will be about some functional relations on, on the space of easing pots model models and um, some related combinatorial topics. So the, yes, so uh, it will be two parts uh, of the talk. The first part uh, deals with some functional relations. So I'll speak about uh, how the POTS models uh, connect with uh, uh, young baxter and tetrahedron equations. And uh, in the second part of the talk, um, I'll speak about the combinatorial objects uh, which connected with all this uh, with the POTS models and, 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 and all this stuff. So the, the main hero of the talk is uh, the POTS model. Uh, the partition function uh, of the POTS model start triangle transformation. And so I'll start with, with the definitions. So uh, for me today, um, the POTS model, it's just, uh, I'll, I'm going to deal with the partition function of the NPOTS model. And uh, it's just for me not, I'm not going to discuss any physical meaning of, of um, POTS model. Uh, so just the partition function. What is the partition function of the NPOTS model is just a generating function of states uh, of the graph. So we have a graph with um, and the uh, state function sigma on vertices of the graph. So uh, we assign to each uh, vertex uh, weights from zero to n minus one. And uh, every, each edge of a graph have uh, weights Alpha e and uh, Bore, Bore, I'm sorry. I suppose we see not the same thing as you. Um, so I, I I see the 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 page with proposition about the invariance of the partition function. Mm. Uh, so let's. Uh, sorry, let's try again. So this is the title, yeah? Yes, yes, it's better. And, uh, oh. and now the second page. Uh, perfect. So, so now it works, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, thanks. So this is the definition again. Um, so the, the partition function is the following guy. We, it's a generating function of states of uh, the vertices. So to each vertex we assign again weights from zero uh, to n uh, from zn, so from zero to n minus one. And each edge uh, has weights alpha e and beta e. And uh, so we, this, just this definition means that if the states of vertices of the edge coincide, then we have uh, alpha e, and if not, then we have beta e. 
So this is the partition function of uh, anisotropic n pots model. And uh, in the first part of the talk, we uh, will deal with only with the case n is equal to two. So below we have only two, two weights of vertices. Uh, the second guy is a star triangle transformation is a it's very important uh, transformation on the space of graphs uh, coming from uh, theory of electrical networks. Uh, so it's a little more general than usual contraction, deletion of edges, uh, transformations of graph. We, so I'll discuss later the deletion and contraction relations and all this stuff, but now we're interested in, in this star triangle transformation. Um, and yes, and now I'm going to um, present, so I'm going to answer the following question. So what what's happened to the and what's model partition function? If we um, if we transform our graph in such a way, uh, if we are doing star triangle transformation, so to maybe um, this slide concerned with uh, some uh, I, I would like to so explain more correctly the what i'm going to to do so uh the, the correctness of, of what i'm going to do with, with my graphs so uh i would like so i mean that what is what does it mean this star triangle transformation that the the rest of the graph stay the same and the only thing which uh, we transform is in in into this triangle and so after transformation, all, all the rest of the graph uh, will be the same and the partition function. Uh, so we, we could uh, formulate this lemma. Uh, the meaning of this lemma is the following, that if we have two graphs, we, we could choose some uh, boundary vertices in the graph. And if we uh, glue two graphs, uh along these uh, vertices then the partition function uh, the then the following equation on the partition function uh, holds so uh it means that to understand what what is happening with the partition function uh, during the star triangle transformation we are interested only in the part of the graph inside this triangle. Boris, uh, I'm sorry, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, I'm not in, in, in this subject, so I, could you just give an example? What kind of graphs you consider? Is it a, a lattice or is it arbitrary graph? An arbitrary graph, just arbitrary graph. Maybe with uh, possible loops and multiple edges. Absolutely. So, so you define you define because uh, originally POS, uh, POS of, uh, model was defined uh, on, on, a, on a square lattice. Yeah, as yeah, yeah. I, but as, I, we, as I remember, so we are dealing with with any with arbitrary graph. Yeah. So you define POS model on arbitrary graph. Uh, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe you can just draw some little picture about how, how they you, you what you do. So here. so the picture looks like like on these slides, we just have uh, any... Um, any three so vertices just, of the graph. We just, hmm? You take any three vertices of the graph, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So outside this uh, this stuff, we have, we have something, but on the right-hand side, in the right-hand side, we have just the same. Thank you. Uh, um, yes. So, uh, sorry, may I ask something? 
yeah. are you allowed to have uh, other edges uh, from the central vertex on the left hand side? No, no, no. So inside this triangle uh, allows only only this picture as as you see here. So only star and triangle. Sorry, and for two vertices uh, from the, of the star, uh, the boundary vertices are not cannot cannot be connected by an edge. So uh, you you have the star on the left hand side, and uh, uh, but uh, are you allowed to have an, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. an edge connecting as uh, yes. any, any two of the, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I allow something like. Okay, so uh, so after the transformation, you will have a multiple edge then. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oops. Um, yes. Okay. So and the um, the statement is the following: that uh, the partition function of two ports model. Uh, I, I remind that we have n is equal to two, uh, is an invariant under the star triangle transformation with respect to the following change of variables. Here, t i's, t1, t2, and t3 uh, is equal to alpha one divided by beta one. So, so here, uh, t1, Uh, Etc. So we have. I remind that we have uh, these three uh, edges, and we have alpha one and beta one, alpha two and beta two, etc. And uh, therefore, we have t one, t two, and t three, etc. So uh, maybe I remind how the partition function itself looks like. So it's a mm, uh, so we have this sum of products of alpha e and beta e. So in our case, some sum of products of alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and beta one, beta two, beta three, depending on the states of the boundary vertices of this triangle. And we, so it's not very hard, uh, and it's some technical, uh, technical statement that uh, if we track the, the possible states of this triangle, uh, we obtain the, the formula on this slide. Sorry, another question. Can you return to the definition of the partition function? Uh, what is yeah. again? What is delta of sigma e? It's just uh, one if uh, the boundary vertices of the edge e coincide, and zero if not. So it it, it means that again this this strange uh, formula means that if we have two weights of vertices zero or one. If uh, the weights of the vertices or the boundary vertices of the ends of the H E coincides, we have alpha E here. And if not, then we have beta E here. Mm -hmm. I'll try to erase this stuff. But then yeah. Yeah. Then you should you should apply delta to e, not to sigma e, because uh, sigma e is uh, an, is just uh, a, an element of the ten, right? Sigma e. It's a map. Uh, maybe, maybe yes, but but the meaning of, of this formula is is just okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is. Uh, as I said, 
some technical technical proposition, but I think it's the meaning of this statement is very interesting. So uh, we we have the invariance of of the star triangle transformation of the n pods partition function under the star triangle star triangle transformation. Uh, the next uh, the next uh, hero is the local Young Baxter equation. Uh, so local Young Baxter equation is the following guy. So here the R R I G of T K is a three by three matrix, and uh, so. It turns out that this transformation from the previous slide, transformation which gives the invariance of the uh, NPOTS model and the star triangle transformations, gives a solution uh, of uh, the local Young Box equation. So, the following solution uh, it's the orthogonal, orthogonal solution of the local Young Box equation. So, here you see s of t is just an involution and uh, this r matrix i define here so it's r12 of t3 and so the the the, the other matrices uh, define analogously and uh, the this is so just so the the main the main thing here uh, i think that it's connected with some so it's connected with its orthogonal uh, solution and uh, therefore we have some um, some ideas and generalization of all this stuff but it's only on the level of idea now ideas now uh, but uh, again, this this statement that uh, this is the solution of local max equation is um, again technical technical uh, proposition. Uh, you could just uh, compute the left hand side and the left and the right hand side of uh, the equation. Uh, please, uh, uh, sorry, may I interrupt you? Uh, could you uh, just in two words formulate where you're going? What's the problem you're solving? And uh, because we just, I, I see the, the flow of computations and statements. Uh, what, what is the problem you're doing? So what do you want to achieve? Yes, um, today, so I'll present a few, so maybe not a few, but many technical results today but the main idea that all this result uh, connects the combinatorial stuff like that polynomials uh, and uh, some uh, statistical mechanics stuff like uh, and post models uh, and so we will we'll see some uh, some statements with which relate one and, and other part of the story. Uh, may I add some, <coughs> some comments? Um, <coughs> so, in fact, this, Sorry? Uh, but may, may I, I give some comments just to, to, draw, to draw the, uh, the, the direction, the, the principal direction of, of, this, of this work? Uh, uh, so, in fact, it, it, it's an analog of the very interesting cluster structures, like the Lustig problem, like the electrical network. Uh, in this case, we have uh, many analogous properties, like the star triangle transformation, like the solution of the, Young, uh, of the local young baxter equation, but of the different type, of orthogonal type. Uh, in the list case, it is the unipotent group. In the, uh, in the case of electrical network, 
uh, we have uh, uh, we have a solution which is uh, uh, relevant to the symplectic group. In this case, in the case of uh, of the Eisen model of the n equal to pots model, we have an orthogonal solution of the local Jan Baxter equation and the corresponding solution of the uh, Zamolochik of tetrahedron equation. So it's a part of this of the series of uh, similar structures of the similar cluster structure. The, the transformation, the mutations are given by the star triangle transformation. So the role of this uh, orthogonal group uh, is not clear in the uh, modern uh, state of the Eisen model. So that's, that's an idea for future research, but uh, we have some very important uh, frames of, uh, of this cluster structure. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So is it an answer somehow? Okay, let's, let's, let's continue. We'll see. <laughs> okay, uh, I, ha I have a, a bit more technical question. It's rather strange for me to see a uh, hyperbolic sign of logarithm. So yeah. yes, yeah, just uh, some rational function of <laughs> of the i's variables. Yeah. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just um, um, some. So it's a uh, uh, this this solution. Uh, so we uh, like. Uh, it's very similar to the Sergeyev solution of uh, local young Baxter equation. And uh, therefore we put, so we just put, put, put the analogous formulas here, but you're right, of course. Uh, so, uh, yes, as Dima um, uh, said, uh, th the next step is that it turns out that uh, this T to T prime transformation uh, defines the solution of uh, the Malachik of tetrahedron equation. Um, Ah, some some comments in the chat. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, some preliminary preliminary work here. Uh, so we have uh, this so-called standard graph, uh, and in in each vertex. Uh, of this graph, uh, I would like to assign this uh, uh, R matrix, again R matrix, but now uh, it will be four by four matrix. Uh, so in the intersection of strands A and C, for example, we have this vertex uh, labeled by five. So the matrix R A C of T five is this Four by four matrix, um, and uh, so the whole picture corresponds to the product of our matrices. Uh, this uh, product uh, defines uniquely because we have, uh, to speak the truth, we have an orientation of this, of this uh, graph from left to right. So. We have uh, something like like this uh, orientation here. So each strand uh, oriented, and this uh, this uh, product uh, defines uniquely. Uh, yes, and uh, so. We want to construct uh, the solution of uh, the Malachik of Kudrahedron equation. And uh, the idea is following. Uh, so what is 
um, the local Jan Bakter equation, you could understand it as a, mm, for example, I don't know, as a third Rydermeister move. Uh, so uh, graphically, it's like a third Rydermeister move. And here in this picture is a consequences of uh, four, this like a third uh, Rydermeister moves. So here, for example, the, the first uh, transformation T1 to 3, uh, we just take the strand D and uh, take it from the left to the right. So we take three, vert three vertices 1 to 3 uh, and take strand D from left to the right. Uh, as in the third Rider Master move. So we take this uh, three vertices and uh, strand D, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, strand D, take from left uh, to the right from uh, the vertex three. Uh, then we take uh, the triangle one, four, five here, and uh, the strand D again. Uh, here I have a misprint. This four and five should be um, exchanged. So here I take this. D strand and take it from the left. Boris, the with top. the first move, what happens with the orientation? Is it consistent with your orientation? Yes, yes. So, so the orientation will stay the from same. the left to the right, but D will be uh, on the second picture will be both uh, to the right. Yeah, yeah. I just I just uh, save the orientation as, as it was. Ah, save. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so here again, we have to uh, exchange four and five. I hope no other uh, mistakes here. And uh, so it, it turns out that after four such transformations for the, the sequence of four local Jan Baxter uh, transformation, uh, we get just the same uh, graph uh, just the same standard graph. So, yes, and uh, I remind that to each picture on this, to each graph on this picture, uh, we on the previous slide we assign some uh, the product of six uh, error matrices. Okay, so the so maybe you already see here the um, uh, the of the graphedron equation. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, but but for now, what what we have? We have uh, again this. Two, so and what I. Um, what I have to say that we could uh, change uh, the order uh, of our local Jan Baxter moves because here we start from the uh, from the vertices from the vertices one to three and uh, we could start uh, from the vertices three five six so here we have. T one two three, T one four five, T two four six, and T three five six. But we could go. We could start from the vertices three five six, and then we'll get the following. T three five six, T 
to so just in the opposite direction uh, so in, in the in the opposite order and the uh, the idea is the following so again and to each factor here to each factor here and in the left hand side and the right, right hand side above and below we assign the products of six uh, error matrices uh, and uh, we have and at the end we have just one and the same standard graph so and therefore we have uh, this uh, this so we have uh, this equation the 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 logic of the graphic equation and uh, uh, the, the uh, question is if so what so what what we had we had uh, this transformation from t to t prime uh, which defines uh, the local young box equation in each triangle here uh, together with uh, this s involution and we obtain the uh, equation in in the form of the logic of tetrahedron equation equation in the form of the logic of tetrahedron equation uh, where the the parameters depends on our t's and uh, on our rules of transformation from t to t prime and uh, the question is whether whether these um, parameters uh, defines uniquely uh, from from the initial data uh, so and it turns out that the answer is yes uh, i should erase something So, yes, uh, the make pin one is just this transformation from T to T prime variables. Uh, and this is uh, this products uh, of uh, our, our matrices. So, and in the end, we have the tetrahedron equations, and where t um, t transformations um, defines as follows. Yeah, so we it's a operator from v to the power six to, to v to the power six, which acts non-trivially only on three this ijk indices. And uh, so uh, it turns out that the, the elements in the left hand side defines uniquely by the elements uh, in the right hand side. So it follows from the following that um, why it didn't work that um, here after so. Uh, if you just consider the, the product of all these uh, error matrices here uh, then it turns out that the depending of um, the resulting matrix uh, from the parameter t4 here uh, very um, very very simple and uh, then and, and this um, element, this matrix element defines uniquely. And then more or less step by step, element wise, all, all the elements of the resulting matrix uh, defines by induction or step by step uh, from the initial data. And uh, yeah, so th this is again some, some technical. Um, some technical statement, but but idea um, very nice, and the 
corollaries which we are not uh, formulate yet, but uh, what for, for us is very uh, are very interesting. And the, this um, method of applying local Jan Baxter equation uh, also comes from some uh, the idea of this method also comes from some cluster uh, cluster cluster structures uh, methods uh, yeah so in the, the theorem in the result the, the this um, transformation uh, t to t prime this transformation of parameters define uh, defines the orthogonal solution for the local Jan Baxter equation and the solution for the as a knowledge for the equation. Uh, as uh, we understand that this statement itself may be not new, uh, the, the this step from local Jan Baxter to tetrahedron, but we didn't find any um, proofs of this fact. So, uh, to speak the truth, we have one more proof, but it's even more technical than this one. So, I'm not going to, to present it. And uh, so, this is the end of the first part, uh, the part concerning with uh, some functional relations uh, on and what's model and uh, uh, the next part deals with connections with uh, between combinatorics uh, combinatorics of graphs that polynomials and plot model models and some corollaries of, of this uh, connection okay so, uh, first of all, one small definition. Uh, we had um, partition function uh, Z without tilde um, when we assign some arbitrary weights to edges. And uh, I want to define isotropic. Uh, and ports model. It means that we, we fix the param parameters alpha and beta, which are assigned to edges. So now uh, our uh, partition function will uh, depends only on two fixed parameters alpha and beta, and of course uh, of n. So die. And from now on, I'm not fix n is equal to two. N is uh, arbitrary. Uh, that polynomial is a well-known guy. Uh, we could define it by the deletion contraction recurrent, uh, recurrent relation. Uh, so here g minus e is just a graph where we delete edge e and uh, this guy g factor e is a graph where we uh, first delete this edge and then glue the endpoints of this edge e uh, and uh, so it is a very classical uh, classical polynomial and the classical result that the uh, inputs isotropic inputs partition function uh, connects with the uh, that polynomial in such a way as uh, written here so it's uh, just uh, that polynomial with some uh, combinatorial coefficients again alpha and beta here is a uh, fixed parameters, fixed weights of edges now in our partition function uh, Z. And the K, C, and R 
are some uh, so it's it's uh, some properties of, of graph like number of connected components and uh, rank and corank corank and all this stuff so the this is very important uh this is a very important uh, classical relation for example as i understand the so the endpoints model is uh, some generalization of uh, easing model and uh, on Zagger used the combinatorial combinatorics of uh, that polynomial to uh, calculate the, the easing model on the uh, quadratic uh, lattice uh, so he, he used this this connection uh, and uh, but i i'm going to uh, to present how we could use this connection in, in the opposite direction in a few slides so on one what's happening again uh okay so the the main ingredient here is uh, big duality so we consider two uh, arbitrary, two different uh, isotropic endpoints models. So two, two, two different partition functions uh, with uh, different alpha one, beta one, alpha two, beta two. And then the statement that the partition function of the first model uh, expressed in terms of all subgraphs uh, of the so partition function of subgraphs of the uh, graph of the second model. So the here sub here the the term edge in induced subgraph means not means the following that if we have mm -hmm, some subset what's happening. If we have some subset of vertices, uh, yes. So, edge induced subgraph is the following. If we have, sorry, some subsets of edges, so we have a graph, mm, then, uh, for example, spanning subgraph. Uh, edge if we have some subset of edges for example we take uh, one and two then edge uh, induced subgraph due to this subset a if a capital is uh, one and two then we have uh, this um, sorry if the set of edges of A is one and two, then we have, this is the edge uh, induced subgraph. So it's not the same as the spanning subgraph, uh, which has the same set of vertices as the um, whole graph G. So span the subgraph has the same set of vertices and this edge induced subgraph uh, no. Uh, may, may I ask? Uh, so, yeah. uh, so a, a is a subset of uh, edges, right? No, no, no. Or not? A, what is A? A is just a subgraph. Ah, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, right. Overall. overall so, be, be, but it, it, well, uh, in the lower part of your uh, picture, A what is written as. Uh, Ah, ah, E yeah. of ah, okay, E, e of, of edge is the set of edges. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Okay, the set of edges of that. So again, uh, uh, then what, 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 A is uh, A is any subgraph. Yeah, in yeah, the, any. In the sum. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and okay. if A is empty, then we have this 
normalize normalization. So uh, and again, uh, age induced subgraph. Uh, can can you please repeat what this means? Age induced subgraph. So so it, it just we it, take any subset of ages and uh -huh. all vertices of okay, uh, okay. the main graph, which uh, incidence to this uh, set okay. of ages. Okay, thank you. And A can be disjoint, right? Yeah. So it's not the same as the spanning some graph, if you, if you know this. Because the, the set of vertices of A do not, doesn't coincide with the set of vertices of uh, the main graph G. Uh, okay, and we have this uh, duality. Um, duality formula and uh, absolutely analogous we have this duality from for the anisotropic pot pots models so when uh, all then we do not have fixed uh, alpha um, and beta just arbitrary alpha and beta and here are the, these coefficients you see p and you uh, one and the same. And here they depends on, on the edge in the second proposition. Uh, okay. And uh, what? Yes. Uh, so the uh, as I said, we want to obtain some uh, benefits from uh, the partition functions uh, to the combinatorics. Uh, and these benefits uh, will appear from this big duality. And uh, at first, I want to define this, these two guys, this some specialization of, of that polynomial, uh, chromatic and flow polynomials. Uh, of course, we could define it independently. So the, the, I mean, the, the chromatic polynomial is just uh, a number of ways of color the graph and the flow polynomial is also connects with um, flows on non-zero flows on the graph and connect with the uh, Kirchhoff flow, but it doesn't uh, matter for us now. Just we want to understand that this, these two guys is very, very important combinatorial uh, invariants, uh, chromatic and flow polynomials. Uh, and they are at the same time that polynomial, so the uh, specialization of, of that polynomial. And uh, so the, some nice corollary of this big duality uh, is uh, the theorem which connects chromatic and flow polynomials uh, in the so you see just uh, some, um, the form of this statements very similar to the big duality. And of course it's a corollary of the big duality that the, we could express chromatic polynomial as a, a summation through all some graphs of uh, flow polynomial, but you see here summation goes through all spanning subgraph, not induced subgraph. So spanning subgraph uh, is just the same. So spanning subgraph, we have a we take a subset of edges of G, uh, and uh, all edges of uh, the main graph G, and uh, each subset of edges 
defines uh, spanning some graph. And the set of vertices of each spanning some graph coincide with the set of vertices of G. Uh, and we have with some computer, ah, yes, um, this, this guy's E small, V small, and all this stuff, K small, um, it's a number of edges, vertices, and connected components of the graph G. So some combinatorial prefactors. And it turns out that here I read, write down the expression chromatic polynomials as a uh, spanning subgraph of flow polynomials, but we could express in different direction from flow polynomial to chromatic polynomial. Uh, uh, and so we could um, obtain um, a lot of um, expression, uh, equations uh, in such forms from the biggest duality. But I um, put this guy here because of this is uh, the Matasevich theorem due to uh, Yuri Matasevich, who had uh, a very hard proof of, of this statement, but from the big duality, it's mm, not very hard statement. Um, yes, and uh, the second corollary of this big duality is uh, uh, not in the combinatorial part of the story, but we use some combinatorial arguments here. So the uh, so-called, so we called it uh, shifting order formulas in uh, the NPOTS model partition function. Uh, sorry, some artifact here. It doesn't, so I didn't define this guy, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we just could uh, express the partition function of N1, N2 uh, POTS model in terms of the partition functions of N1 and N2 a model separately of all spanning subgraph uh, of G. So I don't want to write down the, the formula here. It's mm, maybe um, not not very interesting. And but uh, the nice idea that we uh, used uh, that the proof of this. Uh, statement uses uh, the properties of complete flow polynomial. So again, it could be um, defined just combinatorially uh, as uh, some numbers of flows on a graph, uh, but we could define it as a, as a I written as written down here in the first line, there's just uh, some overall uh, spanning subgraphs of G. Here, A is a spanning subgraph. And uh, the point is that uh, this is a multiplicative invariant. So this complete flow polynomial multiplicative. Um, and using Bix duality, we could express uh, flow polynomial in terms of complete polynomial and back. And uh, and then express this partition function of uh, n one times n two 
model uh, in terms of this uh, of these models and one and then two. Um, yes. So and uh, yes, yeah, sorry, I should erase all this. So I present I presented some combinatorial part of the story, the connection with uh, the that polynomials, uh, and in the end, uh, I'd like to present some ideas how to one could uh, connect this uh, Giggs duality to the star triangle transformation, and uh, you see here uh, somehow fourteen term relations. Uh, 14 term relation uh, in the space of uh, n pots model partition function. So, what we have here, here in the first line, uh, we have this big duality for the for some model for some partition function uh, on the graph G and. Uh, G prime graph G prime is a graph G after the star triangle transformation, and so we have this biggest duality formula for the uh, graph G prime, and we have here some new coefficients uh, p and q p prime and q prime, but uh, the idea is the following that. Uh, We have this triangle, and uh, all the rest are the same. Uh, and we could uh, mm, so we could connect this p and q primes and p and q and p and q itself itself uh, in such a way that all the rest. Um, <clears throat> all the rest partition all the rest partition functions in the right hand sides of these equations will be the same and all difference uh, will be only inside this triangle so in those parts of uh, the graph which we to which we are not uh, allowed to apply star triangle transformations and uh, in the end, we have uh, some equality of seven, um, seven terms in the left hand side and seven terms in the right, right hand side, which depicted in this picture. Uh, and this, some 14 term relations, and we will get this 14 term relations, which I don't want to write down now. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, we have something, in, some connection. So um, I think this is uh, more or less the end of the story by now. Mm, I have. Some time, my, my, so maybe some questions. Uh, Dima told us or about the mutations and the cluster algebra. I can you point where these objects appear in this construction? Uh, so here, the 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 main maybe. So we are using the ideas from cluster algebra theory when in this story with the when we're 
where I came from local Jan Baxter to uh, tetrahedron equation. So these ideas came from cluster algebra. Uh, may, may comment. Good. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, mm. Uh, for example, in the electrical case uh, or in the elliptic case, uh, uh, we can we can think about uh, the point, uh, for example, from the unipotent group or uh, the point from the space of response matrices of an electric of electrical network. And this uh, the, any point, uh, so the, there is uh, the, there are different charts uh, parametrizing. Uh, this space of matrices and the transformation from one chart to another is uh, 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 normally it is the composition of several uh, star triangle transformations. In this case, uh, we, we cannot say for the moment uh, uh, about what kind of space we are talking about. But uh, we have the, si the same, uh, uh, if, you, if you want, uh, the same uh, uh, local structure, uh, the same vertex representation. And in place of uh, symplectic or uh, unipotent matrices, here uh, we have orthogonal matrices. But uh, the rest is completely similar to the uh, uh, to the electrical and the unipotent case. So th 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 that was our motivation. But uh, in a sense, it, it is the start of this work and uh, it is clear for us. I have a question uh, about yeah. the, the fortunate term relation. I, I have, so uh, it's my thought, it's my mistake maybe, but I thought that uh, it is true only for n equal to. You have written uh, fortune. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yes, yes. For yeah. N equal to. Sorry, yeah, it's, it's because of we have uh, star triangle invariance only in if n is equal to two. Yes. Well, change, changes very rapidly, but uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, Frank said that, yes, these ideas from a local young Baxter to tetrahedron, pretty old. <laughs> yes, that's true. Frank, could, could you comment this? Now, do you speak yes. about the orthogonal case? Because uh, we we were looking for the uh, demonstration that the orthogonal uh, case, uh, which is uh, relevant to the uh, to the Eisen model, is a solution of the tetrahedron equation. Do you know the uh, the demonstration in the literature? So the question intended for me, uh, Dima. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, Frank. I don't know. The, I don't know the conditions on this. Uh, Orthogonality. Our consideration, or where, how we came to the local young best equation, was had a quite different motivation, and predated long cluster algebras. It was in the question about multidimensional integrability. How can you extend the notion of a Lux equation to higher dimensions, in kind of embedding it in the kind of young Baxter model? So for us, these local young Baxter equations were considered as. Uh, classical equations of motion rather than than um, than quantum equations and they are the analogs of they were for us the higher dimensional analogs of the of the Lux equations on a lattice and <clears throat> uh, then uh, we proposed that in the end of the 1980s with Jean-Michel Maillet and then Kasharov and Sergeyev they found some explicit example connecting to the uh, to the um, uh, to, to, to kind of young Baxter maps in some sense. Mm -hmm. So these local young Baxter equations were in some sense a kind of precursor to young Baxter, young Baxter maps. 
Uh, it is very strange and interesting because the, uh, the structure angle transformation for this model was known by Baxter. It is written in, in his famous book, but yeah. it yeah. is not said that uh, this transformation solves the tetrahedron equation. It is not used in, in his work. No, so that no. is that is strange. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but here it is a part of the of the general picture of uh, different cases go uh, go go uh, by the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, so over the, on the orthogonality, I, I don't have any comment to, to, to make. <coughs> but it is always on the list of Sergei. Sergei falsified the, uh, the, the solution of the, uh, of the local Jan Baxter equation, and yeah, yeah. it is in his, uh, in his classification. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, true. Surely, but the, the relation of this, <laughs> of this solution with the, with the easy model, uh, it's a little bit mis mysterious for, for the moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, if there is no, uh, there are no more questions, uh, I'd like to present the next talk. Uh, uh, it is not. Uh, uh, it's not true for for the next uh, for the next. Uh, uh, our session, but uh, we plan uh, some talk uh, uh, continuing this uh, this topic, which relates the TAT polynomial with the geometry of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the Nikajim varieties. So, this is an announce for the for the next time. Thank you. Okay, if uh, there's no questions, uh, I'd like to thank Boria and all the participants. Thank you. Thank um. you. So I'll stop. Yes. Thank you.